All right, guys. Good afternoon. Today uh, is two dash ten. We're finishing up chapter two today, and we're talking about how to figure out change expressed as a percent. Basically, we're talking about percent of change. If you guys have ever looked at the stock market, you've seen percent of change. You'll see something like this. You'll see the symbol of the company. For example, this is Disney. These numbers are completely made up. But you'll see something like this in the stock market. You'll see 585, and then you'll have another column, and then it's like 485. And then over here, you'll have the percent either increase or decrease. Okay? They'll give you a value there. That's percent change. When you have stocks, you want to know by what percentage your stock go up or down. Because the more percentage your stock goes up, the more money you're making. The more percentage your stock goes down, the more you're losing. So that's just one use for percent change. Okay, and you can find that very easily in the stock market. Now, percent change is not exclusive for the stock market. It's for any values that can increase or decrease. And you want to find the percent of change there. If, if you look at the formula here, this little symbol is called a delta. It's Greek. And that delta represents change in physics. So I like to use that. So percent delta, that really means percent change, equals new. New what? New value minus the old value divided by the old value times 100. I multiply it by 100 because I'm finding a percent. And when I find a percent, I'm, I move the decimal two places to the right, which, in other words, means I multiplied by 100. That's literally the formula for percent change. So this is very easy except for the math. The math is, in my opinion, extremely easy. But some of us are having troubles because we're still going home and we're using calculators. That's not going to help you. It's only going to hurt you. So please make sure you do this on your own by hand. Let's look at the first example. A coat is on sale. The original price of the coat is $82. The sale price um, is $73. What is the discount expressed as a percent change? Well, my percent change here is going to equal new value, which is 73, minus old value over old value times 100. So then, 73 minus 82, please remember when the signs are opposite, you subtract as normal. Keep a sign of largest absolute value. So that's going to be negative 9 times 100 over 82, which is going to equal negative 900, good job, over 82. OK? Does that make sense, everybody? OK, now from here, let's divide it. Let's find what x equals. So 82 on the outside, negative 900 on the inside. I know this is going to be a negative. Whenever you have a negative percent for these percent changes, that is a decrease. You are losing, so it is a decrease. Whenever the, the percent change is positive, that means it's an increase. So 82 goes into 90 one time. OK, then that drops that. So that's going to be 80, correct? So 82 goes into 80 zero times. So that's 80. Decimal, decimal. Bring that sucker down. 800 is going to go, 82, I'm sorry, goes into 800 nine times. Very good, sir. Which is going to be 720, 738. 738, good job, guys. Thank you very much. So you bring down the zero. That's a two. I borrow, I borrow. Uh, so that's going to be six. That's going to go in. Okay, I apologize about that interruption. Um, where were we? Okay, um, 82 goes into uh, 620, I, I think, seven times. That's 560 plus 40, yeah, 574. Bring down to zero. Just got to go one more place. 
one borrow. So that's going to be 460, and that's going to go in five times. So x equals negative 10.98%. A lot of times, they're going to say to you, um, go ahead and round it to the nearest percent. So in this case, what would the nearest percent be here? Negative 11 percent, and this is a decrease. Now, sometimes on the SAT, they will not put the negative here. They won't. They'll just put the answer as 11 percent decrease, or they'll have another choice of 11 percent increase. Please remember, if it's negative, it's a decrease. Okay? Does that make sense, guys? It's pretty simple, right? Yes, sir. All right, I apologize about that second interruption. I'm sorry. Um, like I was saying, if the answer is a negative, it's a decrease. If it's a positive, it's an increase. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, we're not going to talk about the stock market right now. You could take you could take a class in economics about that, sir. Um, but yes, usually when people uh, when the stock prices go up, that is a percent increase, sir. Yes, and then yes, they will sell it if they made a lot of money to bring in their money. But that's that's not really a question of what we're talking about. But thank you for your interest, sir. Okay, example two: store buys an electric guitar for two hundred ninety-five dollars. The store then marks up the price of the guitar to $340. What is the markup expressed as a percent change? Okay, well, percent change equals new, which is 340, minus old, which is 295. Good job, son. Over old, which is 295, times 100. Excellent. So this is going to equal 340 minus 295 is 45 times 100 over 295 which equals 4,500. Good job, guys. Divided by 295. So, 295 on the outside, 4,500 on the inside. 295 was in the 450 one time. But look, look what they did. Round to the nearest percent. So do we got to go all the way to the thousands this time? No, we just got to go to, the, to, to one decimal place. We just got to go to the tenths and round up. Because since we already multiplied by this 100, we've already turned this into a percent. Does that make sense? All right. So 295 goes into 450 one time. Bring down that 0. That's a 5. I borrow. That's a 4. That's a 3. That's 14. So that's a 5. That's a 1. That's going to go in 5 times. 295 times 5. 5, 2, 7, 4, 10, that's 14.75. Okay, so I'm going to go decimal, decimal. I just got to go one more place. 5, borrow, that's a 15. So that's 8. So that's going to go in um, uh, 3, will not make it. So 2 times. So we don't even have to do the multiplication. We know it's going to go in point 0.2. So what does that round to since we're rounding to the nearest percent? X equals 15%. It's a positive, so you would put increase. Does that make sense, guys? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come again, son? Oh, wait, wait. My math is wrong. Yes. 0 minus 5 is 5. I had to borrow from here, making that a 14. You're absolutely right. Thank you, son. I got lucky. I got lucky, Nicholas. I got lucky. Um, but yes, that would have been 750. That's a 14. Thank you, sir. Okay. Now, last, last thing we got to talk about for today in this chapter. A lot of stuff for this chapter. Equations, rates, ratios, conversions, percent, percent change. It's intense. You have to study. You have to study starting yesterday. 
Study today a lot. Tomorrow a lot. This weekend a lot. Monday night a lot. Study, study, study. Last formula. Relative error. Relative error is something you're going to see on the SAT. You're not going to see 50 million questions of it, but for sure you're going to see maybe two or three. And it's good to get these nice and easy questions very correct and accurate. It's a very simple formula. It's the absolute value of the measured or estimated value minus the actual value divided by the actual value. Okay? Does that make sense? Yes, sir. No, you cannot cancel out actual values. What he's saying is, can I go like this? No. The reason I cannot do that is because I have this minus here in the middle. That's a great question. If I was multiplying it, yes. But you're subtracting it, so you cannot do that. It's an illegal math operation. So, let's figure out what we got here. A decorator estimates that the rectangular rug is 5 feet by 8 feet. The rug is actually 4 feet by 8 feet. What is the percent error in the estimated area? So first thing, what's the formula for area of a rectangle? Length times width or base times height, either way. Yes, this is absolute value. These guys here are absolute value, yes. Absolutely. If you want, I can make it a little bit bigger. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry about that interruption. A lot of interruption today, guys. I apologize. Really apologize. I guess my kids had some lunch that really made them hyper or something. Okay, so let's talk about this. Area equals base times height or length times width. So the area of the estimate, what's the estimate area? Huh? Right, the estimate area is going to be 40, right? Feet squared. What's the actual area? 32 feet. So now you're ready to rock and roll, guys. The absolute, yes, it is feet squared because it's an area. Thank you. So the absolute value of the measured or estimated value minus the actual value of 32 divided by the actual value of 32. Does everyone see how I got that? Are you sure? Yes? Okay. Now, this is easy. This is going to equal the absolute value of 8 over 32, which equals 8 over 32, which equals 1 fourth, which equals 0.25. And then I can multiply that by 100 to become a percent, and it'd be 25%. So technically, technically, you should be multiplying this by 100 also. I take it for granted because we're talking about a percent, and I would imagine that you know that you got to turn it into a percent, but that's not fair. You got to multiply this by a hundred at the end always to get that final percent. So what was the error here? It's a 25 percent error. Now you may think, what does that matter? It matters a lot, guys. Let me explain. Um, for example, yes, sir, you had a question. If it's an absolute value and the answer was negative 8, being that it's absolute value, it would still be positive 8. If there's a negative on the outside, there's no negative on the outside because that's not the formula. Okay, so um, I build a lot of things, okay? I like to do a lot of work around the house and whatnot. So I go to Home Depot a lot and I get a lot of wood, all right? Now, the wood that they sell... It's amazing, the percent of error, because I've measured it. And when you go to buy it, it will tell you something like, for example, let's say I want to work with a 2 by 4, okay, 2 inches by 4 inches. So I'll get a 2 by 4 
okay, and I take it home and I'm going to start measuring. And I need a 2 by 4 because I need 4 inches to cover something. I kid you not, man. Every time, every freaking time when I come back and I measure it, the measurement is more like 1.75 inches by 3.5 inches. That's the actual that's the actual measurement. This is what they estimated that it should be. So when they buy this, it's not like Home Depot's trying to hurt me. It's just the way it goes. When people cut something, it's not always exactly accurate. There is always a percent of error. Okay? There's always a percent of error. So I could find the percent of error here very easily. All right, let's try the percent of error um, for the areas of these two. Okay? The estimate error, I mean, the estimate area is 8 inches squared. The actual, what I actually am using, okay, I'm going to go ahead and cheat. You are not allowed to use a calculator, but I am. Um, 1.75, because I only have a little bit of time left, times 3.5. So the actual area equals 6.125. Now, I want to find the relative error of percent, okay? So, it's estimated minus actual and absolute value divided by actual. So, again, just for speed's sake, an absolute value 8 minus 6.125 equals 1.875 divided by 6.125. That equals point. 3, 1, which equals 31% error. Believe it or not, guys, that's a lot. That's a huge error. And if you think about it money-wise, I'm losing 31% of the area that I paid for. Think about that. I'm losing 31% of the area that I paid for. Technically, I should get a 31% discount. But you don't. That's life. Okay? So that's percent change. That's relative error. God bless you. Thank you for a great class. We've got a few minutes now so I can field any questions that you guys need.